Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlibiTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at testing for halide ions um, but we're going to use silver nitrate solution for this. Um, now there is, this is just one way in which we can uh, test for halide ions and um, there is another way as well uh, depending on which syllabus you are sitting I would check that first but um, there is another way which uses sulfuric acid instead. Um, now if you want to have a look at that way just click on the link below and you can have a look at that. Um, but this is just uh, probably actually a, an easier and simpler way, more, much more common way of testing for halide ions. Now, halide ions are uh, basically um, halogens that have gained an, an extra electron to form F minus or um, F minus, Cl minus, Br minus ions, etc. Now, these halogens uh, only exist uh, in solution. They can't exist. You can't get there like a pot of it and unscrew it, and then you've got some Br minus ions in there, etc. It just doesn't happen like that. And these ions um, actually uh, come about from dissolving the salt that they belong to. So, for example, Cl minus ions you can get from uh, dissolving sodium chloride uh, in water, and the sodium chloride will obviously break down, it will split up, and you'll have Na plus and Cl minus ions. So, all of these ions that you're going to see in this video will come from a salt such as sodium chloride, sodium bromide, etc., and um, it's been added to water and formed into a solution. So, uh, that's what all these are here. Now, you might think, well, why do we need to test uh, for halide ions? Halide ions are um, dissolved in solution and they're all colourless. You can't tell. There's no distinguishing smell to them. Um, and obviously, you shouldn't taste them either. Uh, they'll all taste in a very similar way, I would imagine, as well. But you should never, never taste these. Um, but these, um, obviously, these are very difficult to distinguish. So we come up with a method in which we can add a chemical and we can help to distinguish between the, the halide ions. So we're going to start with um, looking at our uh, practical steps, the methods that we're going to take as well, including the uh, often overlooked step, which we'll go into first, actually, in just a moment. Uh, and we're also going to look at um, what you would observe and these test tubes here. Um, and uh, finally, we're going to show you the equation as well that's associated with it. So we're going to start with looking at the practical steps. Now, what we'll do is we'll take our halide ion solutions, put them into test tubes, and you can see I've got all the halide ion solutions there. And um, we're going to add um, this first step first is actually adding dilute nitric acid, which is this here. This is before we add any silver nitrate to the solution. Now, this is uh, normally overlooked, but can actually have a big impact on your uh, on your outcome on your results. The silver nitrate, um, if this if you add silver nitrate into your solution and your solution has um, carbonates and hydroxides present, then actually the silver nitrate um, will react with them and form a precipitate. Um, now, obviously, we don't want to, um, we don't want the silver nitrate reacting with any of the impurities. We only want the silver nitrate reacting with the halide ions that are present in our solution. So, a way in which a way in which we can get rid of these. Um, carbonate and um, hydroxide impurities is by adding nitric acid first and the nitric acid will react with these two ions uh, and remove them from the well remove them from the overall reaction and it means that your silver nitrate is then only left to react with halide ions and not with these impurities here because um, like I say if the silver nitrate did react with your carbonates and hydroxides they would form these two compounds here which is silver carbonate and silver hydroxide, they are insoluble and they'll precipitate out and they'll give you a false result as well, as you'll find out in a minute. Okay, so once we've added that in there, um, we then add our silver nitrate. So our silver nitrate is step one, and that's what we've got set up here. I've got four halide ions here. Now, when we add silver nitrate to um, these halogens, we actually get this reaction here, which is silver nitrate, and we add it to the halide ion. I put X to represent the halogen. Uh, and that's going to form silver halides, depending on what the halogen is, plus uh, nitrate ions as well. Now, depending on what metal this halogen is bonded to, will depend on obviously what bonds with the, the nitrate ion over there. But in fact, we add silver nitrate to this, we add it to fluoride, and we see nothing. So it doesn't, nothing happens, we don't get any precipitate, nothing. So we don't see anything. Now, with the chloride, we do. Um, with the chloride, we get a precipitate that starts to form in there. And this precipitate, which I will write in blue, um, this precipitate is actually um, white. It's the white precipitate that we get in here. Uh, and it is really, really important that you label it as a precipitate. So when you do this reaction, don't say it turns white. Um, you've got to be specific and make sure you form a white precipitate is formed in this reaction. Uh, if we do it with bromine, again, we add silver nitrate to it, we get a precipitate that's been formed. 
Uh, and we know, it, providing we've added our um, nitric acid first, we know that that precipitate is only because of the halide ion. Now, the halide ion that's actually formed is, uh, sorry, the halide ion that reacts with the silver nitrate forms a cream precipitate. So I'll put that on there. So that's a cream precipitate that's formed in there, and that cream precipitate is your silver bromide. That's what the precipitate is. So that's the name of the chemical that you formed. Um, and the last one is the iodide ion. Now this one also forms a precipitate. This one's a little bit more obvious um, compared to these two colours. This one's yellow, uh, and it's quite an obvious yellow as well. So it forms a yellow precipitate. So all of these do. This one is, like I say with the fluoride ion, is no precipitate is formed. You won't see anything. So um, there is a reaction that happens. Um, and obviously, the silver nitrate will react with fluoride and it will form silver fluoride. Your silver fluoride, though, is soluble. Um, so never say that there's no reaction because there is a reaction. It's just we can't visibly see it. So there's no visible change. Um, but silver fluoride is formed, but it's soluble. These ones here, silver chloride, silver bromide, and silver iodide, are insoluble. Um, and so that's why we see it as a precipitate. OK, now you look at these in isolation. Um, they're very difficult to distinguish what they are. White and cream um, might look a bit confusing, they might look very similar. So we need a further test to just make sure absolutely that what these chemicals are. Obviously, if we add these chemicals here and no precipitate is formed, we'll know that's fluoride. So I'm just going to isolate that one. And we're going to look at the next three, which is chloride, bromide and iodide. Now in here, we have our precipitates. So we take these precipitates here and we add dilute ammonia to them first. Now what you should see, when you add dilute ammonia after step one, you should see that actually with your chloride, this stuff in here, this should disappear. So I'll put precipitate um, disappears. Or we can say dissolves. So I'll put that on there. Okay, so it disappears completely. Uh, with the bromide and iodide, we actually still have a precipitate that's present. So the dilute ammonia, adding it to these three, to all three of them, actually don't dissolve. So there's a further test. If you have a, a precipitate that's formed uh, and you add dilute ammonia and that precipitate disappears, um, then you know that your halogen has got to be chloride. But the other two, dilute ammonia doesn't dissolve them. So we can take these two. How do we distinguish between these two? All we can do is we can do a further test. We can take these test tubes and I've brought them down here. So the bromide and iodide, I've brought these down here. Remember, this is going to be cream and this one's going to be yellow. So distinguishing between these two, we add concentrated uh, ammonia. And effectively what happens is with concentrated ammonia, uh, the bromide ion this time, this one does dissolve. So I'll put that on there. So that one does dissolve, the precipitate in there does but your iodide still doesn't dissolve. So what this tells you is actually your silver iodide, which is the product here, that's the yellow in there, is actually really insoluble. Um, it really struggles to dissolve in your solution. Your bromide, silver bromide, will dissolve um, just with concentrated ammonia. Um, your um, silver chloride will dissolve with just dilute ammonia. And your silver fluoride um, is soluble anyway. It doesn't even need any ammonia. Um, and that's why we don't get any precipitate formed in the initial step. But that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.